Agents arrested the suspect Cesar Sayak outside of this auto zone early this morning. Investigators also recovered a white van that was covered in pro Trump stickers. Good afternoon. We are back in the same spot we were yesterday, just across the bridge from Wrightsville Beach. But take a look how much has changed in just the past 24 hours. And I'm being told at least the emergency room is on lockdown right now. Nobody goes in and out unless they are family members. I'm hearing from other people out here that the shooter may have been brought here in just the past 20 minutes. There are a large crowd of supporters that were here for the president, but he got right off the plane waved to them, smiled at them before he got in the motorcade. He did not take time to go over and talk with them like we've seen him do in the past. Well, to Andrew Pollack, the lawsuit is simply about exposing school resource officer Scott Peterson. He says wherever Peterson goes for the rest of his life, he hopes that people know that he's the guy who didn't go in the school. To some of your classmates that, that don't want to come back to school, what do you say to them? I think our message is MSD strong. This images coming in right now from St. Martin from the U.S. Virgin Islands. Is that changing how people are perceiving this? I think it is. I mean, I spoke to so many people here who are native Floridians. They've been here their entire life. They said they never evacuated. They just rode out storms before, uh, but many of them leaving. Here comes one of those big gusts of rain and wind and look how far the water has come up the parking lot since we last talked to you. I mean, just look at it rolling in. Well, John, these touching memorials can't stay here forever. The rain and the hot sun has already begun to take its toll on them. So just how much time is there between the gates coming down and the Brightline train actually crossing? Let's time it and find out. <laughs> Only about 35 seconds. Oscar has a lot of energy, which has discouraged some adopters, but the rescue says that's because he's just a puppy. John, it was right here in this area of the Jupiter Inlet where PBSO spotted from above a boat full of passengers. From Marine Watch 12, they say it docked right over there. They come from different walks of life. 10 years and four months in the Army. Westside Baptist. Law enforcement officer for 36 years. But a veteran? A minister and a former police officer all have one thing in common. The desire to protect. And having a heart for the children and realizing it was a program that was being built from the ground up, I really wanted to be a part of it. Mark Patterson is one of more than 120 people training to stop potential school shooters in Polk County under the Coach Aaron Feist Guardian Program, created after the Valentine's Day Massacre at Stoneman Douglas High School. I really believe that even the mere fact that people know that we are out there could be a deterrent in some aspects. The Guardians, not officers of the law, will protect every elementary school in Polk County. And that is if they make it through their training. It's very intense. It's very, uh, very quality, high quality training. Uh, it's the best in the industry. The six week course runs the Guardians through firearm, rifle, tactics, active assailant, and virtual reality simulation training. Today, I'm more passionate about this than I was coming in. So now, every morning, we're up early. But it's like, I'm happy to come here. I'm happy to train. I'm happy to get this training because you want to be your best person. Yuri Dobson is not only an Army veteran, but a mother and sometimes even a substitute teacher. She says her background has prepared her for this important job. But Stephen Bolden, a Baptist minister, well, he's starting from scratch. This job needs to exist uh, given our society and what we're seeing. and. I just want to be a part of the solution. With three children in elementary and middle school and a teacher for a wife, he says he felt compelled to sign up to give everyone a safe place to learn. It could easily be my children that I'm protecting, um, but either way, it's somebody's child, uh, somebody's mom, somebody's dad at the school teaching. And by the end of the training, all the guardians should be prepared to put their lives on the line. I feel like I would be able to eliminate the threat. I would most definitely be ready to do it, yes. When Hurricane Florence came through, it brought this massive tree down in this home in downtown Wilmington, coming just feet from the homeowner's window where they were sleeping at night. They say someone must have been watching over them. And this is the prettiest part, or used to be the prettiest part of Princess Street. Connie Logothita Street looks nothing like it used to. I think it's sad. Down trees on top of homes and this car make it impassable. One tree narrowly missed Connie's home. But then this enormous bump, bump about five o'clock in the morning, Thursday. 
and I looked out, I said, Andy, this tree is right next to our window. <laughs> I said, it went down. And it went down hard, covering her entire backyard. Missed my bed by inches, inches, literally. And, uh, I, and we don't even have a broken window. Connie feels lucky to be alive. Somebody up there. And Connie's not alone. Other neighborhoods and major roadways across Wilmington are also filled with downed trees, power lines, and debris. <laughs> Crews began the cleanup process Saturday, but it was a lot more work than anyone was expecting. For a Category 1, it's a lot more, a lot more trees and damage than you'd expect for the winds, but I guess with it sticking around so long, it's causing the problems. Wilmington is also bracing for several more inches of rain. There are stories like this all throughout Wilmington as people start to assess the damage from Hurricane Florence.